Hi, I'm Vic Bancroft and today I'm going to show you how to draw a black cat using just a white pencil on black card. For me, by far the easiest way to draw black cats. To begin with, I've uh, prepared a sketch outline on plain paper and I'm going to use white trace down to transfer that image onto the black card, which is there. Make sure um, if you're using transfer paper to, to make have the chalky bit facing onto your black card. So if I just rub that a little bit, you can see that it's coming off. Uh, you'll get all this in the, included in the home workshop kit if you decide to buy that. Details coming up at the end of the video. Uh, when you use trace down on black paper or black card, make sure you don't press too hard. You just want a very faint image. You can of course rub it out. If you want to use freehand, use a white pencil, any uh, things that you want to rub out, make corrections, then you can do that quite easily. So this is going to speed the uh, initial sketching process up quite a lot. I'm going to start uh, around the top, just using an ordinary 2B pencil. I'm going to flick a few of these little furry edges in. Not too hard, and I'm just going to lift it to make sure that it's coming through enough. So you can see there's just a very faint image. That's going to be easier to rub out than if you press too hard and leave a, a dense chalky outline. So and this is only to get you started for the proportions, the shapes and so on. And you don't want a, a dense chalky residue left behind. What I'm going to do is then go over that with a white pencil and rub away any of the chalky substance. So, rough outline of the face, the head, the ears, and there's the other paw, and then we'll do the features, the mouth, two little teeth nose and finally the eyes. Now we need to be most careful on the eyes of course. And that marks the centre ridge in the forehead. And obviously before you remove your trace down, we just hinged with a couple of bits of masking tape at the top. Just make sure that everything's come true that you need. There we are. And peel that off. Save that for another day. You can use uh, one sheet of trace down paper at least half a dozen times, maybe more if you're fairly light handed with it. So don't throw it away. Roll it up and keep it for something else you want to use on black card, black paper, or even black velour. So now we have our initial sketch outline uh, almost printed on the paper with the trace down paper. What we can do then is use our white, ordinary white coloured pencil. Not too sharp to begin with. Always remember when you do fine details and crisp highlights later on you need to keep that point sharp. But at the moment it doesn't need to be that sharp. So what I'm going to do is uh, work from the bottom up this time so I don't want to accidentally rub any of that out. You see it will rub out quite easily but just with the finger. So work from the bottom upwards and I just want to loosely sketch over and around that trace down. And a nice rounded soft part of the coloured pencil. And I'm going to keep these edges around the head, nice and fluffy, rather than draw a hard outline all the way around it, I want to begin to create that fluffy edge, and around the mouth, cheek, and so on, just marking where the two little teeth are going. Now if you have cats at home, I'm 
sure if you have cats even, I'm sure there's always one that kind of sticks out, maybe the naughtiest or something like that. Well, I think we can definitely say that Marley here is uh, one of the naughtiest of all. But hey, you've got to love him, haven't you? Part of his character. So let's turn that around to join the head on the shoulder and then shape of the paw. And finally, we'll just reinforce that fairy edge. So we can sketch a few lines, extra lines, in and around. We've got quite long fur. And down towards the belly. So that should have everything now covered with our white pencil. <coughs> so the easiest way to remove that is just rub it down with your finger. Or you can use an eraser. Now I've got a putty rubber here, needable eraser. So if you gently go over with that, not pressing too hard, and you'll find that it rubs away the trace down quite easily. But it will leave your coloured pencil, or a faint trace of your coloured pencil. So what we want to do is get rid of all that uh, not very pleasant chalky stuff. We've got a nice, soft, faint coloured pencil outline to begin with. Just remember, just rub it down so that you can just see it. You can see the chalky stuff is quite harsh. The coloured pencil, the white coloured pencil is a lot softer. So get rid of as much of that as you can. And we'll do it gently. You don't want to rub out the pencil as well. That should be all traces, pretty much all traces of the chalky trace down removed. So back to our coloured pencil <coughs> and again we're going to build up the tones quite softly. Uh, leave all the fine crisp highlights and details till the end. So let's work on uh, the left hand side here first. And we're going to have that sort of fluffy belly area or the midsection. It's fading out into the left there. And what I'm trying to do now is just create a, a soft, furry outline. Remember, a lot of this is going to be very dark anyway. We're not, we don't have to do all the fur that we see on the reference. Oftentimes, if you're using uh, black as a surface, especially for black cats, then you want to be concentrating just on or mostly on the highlights. That's what gives it the atmosphere. That's what gives it the, the dramatic look, I suppose. So we've got a beginnings of a nice furry edge around there. Another thing we can do is gently soften the inside of that. So you can use a blender, just using the thing. If you've got uh, fairly greasy fingers, then Use a bit of kitchen paper or something like that. And then we'll go around the paw. Thinking about the, the shapes, the roundness of the paw there. So I'll go from the outside edge in. Again, gently to start with. Softly to begin with. Don't put your final highlights in too soon. Get all the darker tones in first, the mid grey tones and so on. And then we're going to do the final crisp highlights and details right at the end, along with the whiskers. So I just want to try and get the rounded shape of that paw, bring that highlight in a little bit. And again, if you want to soften the inside edge, let's give that a little rub. So we're on to his uh, shoulder now, I think. a little furry here. So again, just create that furry edge. Go up to the neck, or down to the neck in this case. Soften the inside, then we'll do this pour on the left. And we 
remember when you were working with white on black, white pencil on black card or white pastel on black or anything like that, especially when you're doing um, a dark subject, black cat in this case, you don't have to do everything. So you can make life quite easier actually if you just concentrate on highlights. You get a much more dramatic effect. So no need to do everything that you see on the photograph. Choose a light source. <coughs> I guess in this case our light is coming from top left. Choose a light source and then concentrate on putting highlights where you imagine that light is going to hit. So again, slightly rounded form to that pore. So from the inside, <coughs> and then we'll work on begin work on the head. So first of all, the chin, nice soft rounded chin. Anytime you've got very short fur, like around the face for example, and you don't need to make too many fur strokes, let's keep it as a nice soft rounded highlight to show the form. A little bit of a rounded form just to the side of the nose, and then we start to get up to the cheek. Now it gets longer. So following the form, let's sketch in some mid-tone highlighted fur. And the ear. This ear is almost folded underneath his head. So you can only see the very tip of it. Maybe a little bit of the leg underneath just to show what's there. And I'm going to fade that out and imagine he was lying on a, laying on a table at the time. So imagine the tabletop is here. I'm just going to let that fade out so we don't have anything intruding on it. So the whole thing is just going to fade out into the bottom and around the edges. So again, go around other side of the chin and the cheeks. And don't do too much on the inside, remember. What we're looking for is highlighted edges, highlighted shapes, highlighted forms. So if you imagine a white ball against a belt background with a light shining on one side, you won't see too much, only the highlight on one side. So whenever you do anything, anything like this on a dark background, just think about the highlights. Nothing else. It's quite easy, especially if you've got a reference photograph in front of you, it's quite easy, I think, to overwork or do too much with a white pencil on black paper. There's, I suppose, an, an urge, <coughs> a temptation to copy everything or to draw everything you see on the photograph. Best if you leave some stuff out. It works a lot better that way. I used to job quicker too. And I always think the easiest, by far the easiest way to draw a black cat do it on a black background. So you don't have to worry about doing, putting all that black fur in, it's already there for you. And the highlight on the ear on that side. Remember it's a slightly rounded form so don't just do a thin line. It tapers towards the point at the end where the ear gets thinner then you can have a thinner line but around the base it's much more rounded so we need a thicker line to show the form and a little bit under the ear and the mouth now first of all we've got uh, the bottom lip here so just a nice soft 
shape to begin with. And then his mouth is slightly open. Paul Marley did come to us as a kitten with a, a busted lip and bent nose. And whether that was done deliberately or through an accident or what, I'll we'll never know. But that's what gives him his kind of unique look. Nose itself, the tip of the nose, and as again we just want a sort of faint grey shape to begin with. Work around the nostrils, let that fade up into the bridge of the nose. And so we'll have a little bit of extra fur on this left hand side under his eye in the cheekbone. Um, the forehead, for open the bridge of the nose. Remember, what's important, whatever you're using, in this case a white pencil, the most important thing when you're painting or drawing fur is to get the length and the direction. So you can have very, very few strokes. As long as you get the length and the direction of that fur correct, close as you can, then you've got no problem. So just the light of it's either side of that dark bit of centre fur. And again, coming around the eye. Fading out at the bottom. And that's our preliminary initial tone. We can highlight some of that a bit more shortly. Now for the eyes. Uh, okay, so we've got the pupil there and we've got the coloured part of the eye here, the iris. So I'm just going to gently shade in the iris. We'll work out highlights and reflections again later. So that, remember we want the darkest value first. <coughs> so the darkest value in the iris is going to be that. The same on this side. darkest value and corners of the eyes that's where the tear duct is again darkest value first so we can now <coughs> rub out anything we don't want so for example this line of the lower rim that's not going to be highlighted when we finish that's going to be quite dark so now we've established that shape take the corner of a, a rubber, it can be a plastic rubber or a punchy rubber like this, doesn't matter which, and then lift out most of that white pencil where the lower rim is. And again, any strong lines you've got there to start with, you don't need now. Just rub them down a little bit. That should do. So, next step is to start. Uh, adding more highlights to the fur and for that what I'm going to do is sharpen the pencil a little bit not too much a sharper tip will always give you a stronger white so if you're working with a, a coloured pencil any coloured pencil it doesn't have to be white working with a coloured pencil if it's rounded the point then you're going to get a softer not quite intense mark to get a real intense colour or a real intense white, it's got to be a lot sharper. So when we do the final crisp highlights, the whiskers and so on, we want that as sharp as we can get it. So let's uh, begin to add some more highlights into the fur, where the light's catching it. And of course we're adding more fur at the same time. That's a little bit sharper, you don't need to add any more pressure. If you've got a blunt pencil and you think, well if I just press on harder it's going to get brighter or more intense. It will to a small degree, but not a lot. Sharper point is always going to give you a more intense mark. Of course, that soft fur, I don't want that to be too sharp or too highlighted, let's say. Two tones will be enough. Our first light grey tone and this lighter grey tone on top. And then we begin to Drag some of that fur down towards the paw. And 
and our lights coming from the left, top left, we're just going to catch any strands of fur, uh, mostly towards that left hand side. <coughs> and we've got a little bit of his chest fur underneath the paw. So we can put a few strokes of that in to indicate the chest fur. Just a few swirls will do. Remember, it's just an indication. We don't have to give the viewer everything. So hold back on what you draw, even if you see it on the reference photograph. Just hold back. Put a few highlights in, suggestions, that's all. A few suggestions of uh, in the dark areas will be enough. So let's continue around the neck and the other paw so there's a little bit shorter and it's going to press on a tiny bit more now to bring out that shape and down to the neck of course you can do this in several layers if you want to the more layers you do the more fur you'll get but even if you're doing that don't do too much in other words you know, keep all the dark areas fairly dark, but not much action in them. Stick to the outlines, the edges, mostly. So we're going to a sharper highlight on his paw now. It's still soft. I want that fur on this paw to be quite soft. That's why I haven't sharpened the pencil too much. Sharpen it a little bit and put a little bit more pressure on it. Nice and crisp. And the same on this ball. And then a little bit of a sharper highlight around the edge, but still keeping it soft. And improving or adding to that round, rounded form. As with anything, the more pressure you put on with the pencil, the more it's going to come off on your paper. You want it to be nice and soft and faint and ease back the pressure, like that. I think that's, that's his pause done. We'll put a little soft highlight on the ear. And again, around, mostly around this left hand side of the face, where the light's catching it, and the light's coming down there. So it will strike the chin, it'll strike a little bit of that, and around here, more than anywhere else. Still keeping it quite soft. Short strokes around the chin. And concentrate on the edge of the face. And the side of the cheeks. And again we'll come back to the cheeks right in here when we do the whiskers and the final crisp highlights and just add a little bit more fur on that highlighted side. And around here, the same sort of thing, the light's catching just that outer edge there. So still keeping it soft, a tiny bit more pressure. And mostly around the edge. And of course we have a rounded cheek, so we've got to have a thicker highlight. And it's an important thing when you're talking about highlights. If you draw a ball, for example, and you just do a line around the edge of the ball, then it's not a ball anymore, it's just a disc. If you do a highlight around there, then bring it in, it becomes a rounded form, it becomes a sphere or a ball. And same if you're doing highlights on animals, people, anything like that. You've got to remember it's a rounded object, so you've got to bring the highlight back in, even if just a tiny bit like that, to show a rounded form. Or a bigger rounded form here, around the edge of the face. Let that fade out the less lit side, <coughs> and the cheek 
underneath the eye is going to catch a little bit of light as well so we'll have a little bit more on the fur around the cheekbone again to show that's a rounded form so it's important when you're drawing something just with highlights is that the highlights are the key to showing shape and form eyebrows above the eye or below in this case because he's upside down again just catching the light a little bit more as is some of the fur on his forehead This eye. So you can see we're gradually progressing from light to mid to dark. That's what we want. A bit more in that cheekbone. Now back to the eyes. Well, let's do the nose first. So the nose is going to get most of its highlight on the left hand side. So again, keeping it fairly soft. It's a soft, fleshy tip of the nose. A little bit more around the nostril. We're not drawing the nostrils, of course. The nostrils are there underneath. We just want soft, fleshy highlights. Wherever the light's hitting. Little teeth. A soft highlight on his bottom lip. <laughs> now the eyes. <coughs> okay. So the light's going to come from the top left, which means that we're going to get a shadow here and a highlight there on the iris. So if it was reversed under normal circumstances you get a shadow underneath the eyelid and then a highlight on the iris towards the bottom of the eye but the head's upside down so that's reversed. So the shadow is going to be there, the highlight part of the iris is going to be in this part. This is the coloured part of the eye so again just softly create the highlight of the iris. On the top part, leaving it darker there. And the same on this side. And a shadow here, highlight just here. And same on this side. Just put a little bit more of a soft highlight in the tear duct, that shiny part of the tear duct where it's moist. So we're about ready for our final crisp highlights. So now what I want to do is make sure that we've got the pencil sharpener to hand and keep sharpening it. You may have to sharpen it every few strokes, we'll see. So that's reasonably sharp now. So what I want is uh, to do some whiskers, shiny highlights on the nose and things like that. So we'll leave the whiskers till the end. Let's uh, think about the, the features first of all. So we'll have a little bit more shine on his bottom lip. Slightly sharper, press on a little bit more. Just a bit more shine. Maybe a little bit more shine on his teeth. On this side of the nose perhaps. The nose is uh, usually damp as well. And before we finish with the eyes, we'll just add extra bit of highlight around the soft chin, a few of the hairs around the edge of the face. About three layers of fur now on this black card. That should be plenty. Should be ample. A little bit more on his cheek, eyebrows, and so on. So finally, it's going to be the eyes. So this is we're going to bring everything together, of course. So I'm going to put a little bit more highlight in the iris on the top part of the eye, the bottom in our picture, the top part of the eye here, in reality, and 
same here. So we've got a, almost a three-toned iris. Highlight, lighter, shadow. It's going to give the eyes a nice shine. And finally on the eyes, just sharpen the tip a little bit. Finally on the eyes we're going to have the, the shine, the reflection. Let's come up here, nice and sharp. Press on a little bit and this will make a world of difference, as you can see already. Those are the reflections from the light coming from the window, perhaps. It's always a very satisfying moment doing this. Always leave these reflections until the end. Such a big reward. Okay, so we've got reflections and a little quick sharpen and then we'll do the whiskers. So we don't have to do all the whiskers. Just the other one here that's catching the light. A couple of eye whiskers as well. A little double check, or I put a tiny bit more of a glint of a shine in the tear duct. Have a little look at that, and I think we're done. So, a little signature, use a white pencil for your signature, not a black one, and um, we'll call that finished. So, thanks for watching again. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. A fairly easy, I think, a fairly easy and Quite satisfying way to draw a black cat using just a white pencil on black card. So details of how to get your home kit uh, should be on the screen anytime now. And don't forget, if you can have a go at this, post your results on my Facebook page. I'd love to see what you come up with, and do try it on something else. So thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time.